everyone's always talking about the best time to buy is when the market's crashing. But how do you actually profit from a market crash? First thing that you need to know is where is your market heading in the next 36 months? First thing to realize is that demographics our destiny. So if you think about real estate, it doesn't actually work at all if there aren't any people. So the very first ingredient for all successful real estate is population growth. And as we all know, that's changed a lot. The migration patterns of the U.S. of where people are going for all sorts of reasons have changed dramatically. So some markets that were really hot in the past decade are dead. Other markets that you've never heard about are emerging. Even though the market is crashing in places like San Francisco, does not mean that I'm going to go into that market and buy a distressed asset. So housing demand always has to be stronger than supply. Because if you think about it, more people wanting something drives the price up. In this case, it's housing demand. So this chart is an annual multifamily, five units and up for permits and starts. The permit is the city or the county process that says you can now break ground, but you have to get a permit first. The start is actually when you put a shovel into the dirt and you actually start construction. What this chart clearly shows is that when rates were really low, let's say, let's just start in January of 2020, you can see that multifamily starts were at an all time low but permits started to trend up. What that means is that interest rates were low and people were interested in adding supply or building. So the black and the green lines or the starts and the permits is precisely why we saw the run up. It's because of the low price of debt. If you think about it, the cost of debt went up and people backed off of construction project, even though they might've been permitted, they decided we're just gonna wait and see what happens with interest rates. And so on the back side of this, as things started to decline, both permits and starts started to decline. This is the very first indicator to watch as we start to see what units are going to be added to the supply. So in a minute, I'm gonna show you a chart that shows real supply, but I want you to know that there's a lag because when you break ground and pull a permit on an asset, it actually doesn't show up as supply until it's complete, which could be one, two, and even three years away. So something that started in 21 or 22 is actually not going to hit the market until 23, 24, or even 25. So the peak that you're seeing here in 22 means that there's actually going to be an oversupply hitting in 24 and 25 which is the precise time that you want to invest and buy these assets. What you want is softness with rental prices and you want lots of units being added to a market so that you get the very best value that you can. And how you profit from this is that you always buy cash flow. So as an investor, what you want is lots of supply hitting a market because it's gonna disrupt the operations, even though it might be for a short period of time. So before we move from this chart, I want you to focus on March of 2024. And as you can clearly see, multifamily starts are at their all time lows. Once again, looking at that two or three year lag, you're going to see this show up in an undersupply in about two or three years, starting at about 25, 26, and 27. So what you want to do is you want to buy in 24 and 25, and perhaps early 26, and then let the market run as there's no more supply coming on for 27, 28, and even 29. Navigating lenders is one of the most challenging but most important things to do. I don't have time to go into more detail now, but I highly recommend you check out this PDF that I made on how to navigate with lenders. So now let's take a look at the actual supply by region in the United States. On the far right, you're going to see in Q1 of 2024, the actual supply as it's hitting the Midwest, Northeast, South, and West. Now the South, of course, includes Florida, Texas. So it's gonna have the bulk of the people. And that showed up earlier in the other chart. But this is gonna create a temporary softness, rent flattening, and it's actually going to be good for the renters. And that's what you want as a buyer is you want softness in the market. You want a lot of units being added 
during this next couple of year period, because as you saw in the chart before, starting in March of 2024, you're gonna have another lag and this chart is gonna drop off significantly like you see in the first quarter of 2010 or 2011. So the right time to invest and make a profit is when there's disruption. And what this clearly shows is that we're gonna have a supply disruption for about two years and it's gonna drop off a cliff. And of course, we're gonna to start to see rent growth again probably starting in late 2026. If you don't know, we own about 10,000 units and we've been investing this way for 24 years. So what we are doing currently is taking a look at these individual markets that are adding lots of supply and capitalizing on the short-term disruption, which will show up in lower occupancies, lots of concessions, and the renters will have a clear advantage in many of these markets over the next couple of years. So you wanna buy during this period for cash flow and hope for capital gains, not like a bunch of the knuckleheads that just got done buying for capital gains only and weren't paying attention at all for cash flow. So the way you capitalize during this period of time and take advantage of this short-term problem is you start to network with people like lenders and debt funds and asset managers, because those are the people that are gonna be managing some of these assets as some of these syndicators are gonna to start to default more and more and more, and the asset managers are gonna take on these accounts and wait for this market cycle to correct itself. And during that period of time, what the big focus is going to be is on strong property management skills. The property managers are the boots on the ground, the actual people that are interfacing with the tenants and managing all the expenses and generating the highest net operating income that they can possibly have. Whereas the asset manager and the portfolio managers are the ones that actually hire the property managers. During disruption of income and high operating expenses, what you want are highly skilled property management folks that can help solve problems or the lenders, the debt funds, and the asset manager. You might be thinking, Ken, I don't have 10,000 units and this is not applicable to me, but we're seeing this right now in the Airbnb and small multifamily projects where there's severe distress. But whether it's a big project or a small project like an Airbnb, it still boils down to cash flow. There's either enough to support all the expenses of the debt or there isn't. So it doesn't really matter if it's 100 units, 200 units, or 300 units, or one unit, if there's plenty of cash that pays all the expenses, then you're probably fine. But once there's a disruption in your model, whatever that might be, then now it's gonna be the lender's problem, the debt fund's problem, or even an asset manager's problem. So size doesn't matter because the fundamentals are still the same. And this is why I always preach, buy for cash flow and hope for capital gain. If you buy for capital gain and hope for cash flow, you've probably put yourself in a really bad situation. The biggest key to this strategy, because it's not for the faint of heart, is picking the right market because you have to look at the demand side. So this chart shows US quarterly demand of people actually wanting to rent versus US quarterly supply. Now this is national. What you need to be looking at is what your individual market or markets are doing because they all roll up into this one big chart. So the big fluctuations in demand from 21 to 22 had to do one with the pandemic, but two because of the interest rate disruption. So when interest rates are low, people are buying houses. And so what are they not doing? They're not renting because traditionally people move from rentals to housing. So what you wanna look for are the markets where there's more demand than supply, just like in this chart. So right now, what I'd be looking for is high supply and high demand. So take a look at the chart for let's say from 19 to 20 to 21, you're gonna see high demand and high supply. What you wanna look for is like this green section or the south. Those are units that are being added supply. They are potentially disrupting many markets from Florida all the way over to Arizona, let's say. So your job is to find out where are all those units being added? Where's all that supply hitting for 24, 25, and even 26? Because that's gonna create a temporary supply problem which is gonna lower rents and lower occupancies. And if you just simply chart that out, 
you'll see that many of those same markets that are going to be temporarily oversupplied right now are going to drop off a cliff at some later point. And that's when you want to be in the position to be able to capitalize on the shortage of supply, which you should see the rising prices and the rising values. But of course, the number one rule, as always, is always buy for cash flow. That's your backup plan always. I bought and owned over 15,000 apartment units in the last 30 years. I just made a video on the seven most important lessons that I've learned from this. I cannot recommend watching this enough because I had to learn all these lessons the hard way. And my goal is to help you shortcut the process so you don't have to learn these mistakes like I did. And check out this video here.